guys, look at that. That's just, mmm. So as you can tell by this abandoned A-frame and this sweater, we're in Iceland, again. And I thought, what better place to talk about landscape photography than the place that has the most epic landscapes probably in the entire world. So let's jump in to today's tutorial. So guys, the reason that we're actually back in Iceland is that we're working with Inspired by Iceland and we're learning about the history of Iceland, which actually includes Vikings and all these crazy stories. But how these trips work is that the tourism board will find content creators from around the world, they'll grip them together, and essentially we'll go on this big trip to create content. But on this trip, I found two amazing landscape photographers. The first person being my new favorite landscape photographer, and that is Jason Charles Hill. Here's a few examples of his work. Like just jaw droppingly good. I've already learned so many tips from him that I wanna share these tips with you. And the other guy you've met in vlogs in the past on our previous trip to Iceland, and that guy is Icelandic underscore explorer. And I feel like when you're around these people, you learn so many new things and I feel like I've actually increased my skill set as a photographer just by talking with these guys and I wanna share those tips with you. So let's go meet these photographers. All right guys, so let's meet our first photographer, one of my new favorite photographers. He's, he's right here. Hey guys, I'm Jason Charles Hill, based out of Australia. I'm a landscape photographer. I've been a photographer for five years now. I've been traveling the world and I get to go to amazing destinations like this. So I'm super stoked to share some tips with you guys. I can't wait. Now, if you guys have been a fan of the vlog before, you've already met him. Here's the last time I was in Iceland in the epic day that we had together. But if you guys don't know him, I'm gonna introduce Woo! Hey guys, <laughs> my name is Gunnar, also known as Icelandic Explorer on Instagram, and I live in Iceland. So we're gonna jump into our first tip. This is actually something that I've learned on this trip, and Gunnar's gonna share it right now. As you can tell, this is obviously a very epic location, but one way you can make it into a more interesting photo is to put a person in there, both for scale, but also to make it even more relatable how it is to be here and experience this beautiful spot. I guess another really good tip is that I always shoot with two bodies. I'm usually Sony's, but I've got a Canon and a Sony now. Usually a prime and then a zoom like this 24 to 70, which can pretty much cover any focal length that you need. And then the prime obviously for the depth of field. I guess one of my other go-to lenses is the 100 to 400. It really helps with compression and then you balance that with a wider angle lens. You basically got every focal length covered. Okay, quick and easy tip for landscape photos is use apps like the Sunseeker or Moonseeker app. And essentially what these apps allow you to do is find out the position of the sun or the moon at a specific location. This way you can kind of pre-plan your shots ahead of time and you'd be like, okay, if I show up at six o'clock, I know the sun's gonna be right about here, which will put this into the frame, which would just make a better photo. So I've linked the apps below, check them out. And PS, that they're not sponsored by the way, they're just apps that I really like to use. So anyways, those have helped a lot. No, it's a little hair on the lens. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when you're traveling, the light is not gonna be perfect, so you should always just try to shoot anyway and make the most of the conditions that you have. Okay guys, so that is a prime example why you need to seize the moment when you see it. So we were just driving along and Emily, who's a part of our team, was like, look, look at the mountain that's kind of popping out of the clouds right now. Everyone looked at like, oh no, we're gonna stop. We're gonna actually try to get that photo. So we pulled over safely, got out of the car, took the photo, and literally within a minute, the clouds had covered that mountain. It's no longer there. That photo opportunity is now gone. So trust your gut. If you see something that you like, safely pull over and get the shot. Another tip for you guys is to sometimes to leave the camera, take in the surroundings, just listen to what's going on around you, 
use your eyes instead of just looking through the viewfinder and you might actually notice something that you wouldn't have seen if you were just looking through your camera all the time. Sense the sounds, the smells, everything. It's definitely gonna set you apart and make you a better landscape and nature photographer. Anyways, to add to that, we got to this island and then we heard some like sounds in the background. You probably just heard it during <laughs> that little talk right there. Th those are seals. Use your ears, your eyes, all your senses to really take in everything around you uh, because you never know what you'll spot and that could be the better part of your photo or the better part of the series of photos that you take. So yeah, well, we're gonna go back to taking photos of seals right now. <laughs> So another good tip I have when uh, taking photos and just trying to create interesting perspectives is think away from what your eyes would normally see and trying to go above or below. And right now I'm actually photographing some seals and trying to use this interesting foreground and shooting low to the water. So I'm actually shooting yeah, right down low near my feet um, and just trying to like, change perspective because I find if you're shooting above around your eye level, it's not as interesting as like maybe you're shooting ab ab above or below or sometimes you bring a ladder along or sometimes you just gotta lay down in the dirt to get the shot. Uh, kind of like I am now. <laughs> okay, so this next tip applies to landscape photography, but it's also just like a nice life hack. So one of my favorite things to do is when we find out that we're going to a location, I just look up that location tag on Instagram and I start reaching out to different people from the area. If I see a photo that I think is really cool, I start saying, hey, what's going on? Really love this photo. Like, my name's Chris. I'm heading to your area during this time frame. you know? What do you think we should see? And if you start building a relationship through Instagram or YouTube or whatever the platform is, maybe you'll actually meet these people in person. You'll have a better experience on your trip. And even if you don't meet these people in person, people are usually willing to just help you out and give you ideas on different locations or places to go or photos to take. So yes, highly encourage that you go on Instagram or YouTube or whatever platform you prefer and just start looking up the locations and build relationships with people there. So here's the tip for you guys that I use all the time and it's doing panoramas. And when most of us hear panoramas, you think of those long, narrow strips of images. But actually you can create panoramas any way you want. You can make squares, you can make verticals, you can make horizontal and it's great for increasing the resolution of your image and really increasing the versatility of your equipment. For example, turning your portrait lens into a wide angle lens. Okay, so this next tip is something I do on every single shoot. I just go on Google Maps, put on the all-terrain view, or essentially, you know, the picture view of Google Maps, and I just look out for interesting patterns. So whether it's mountains or creeks or anything like that, you kind of get this aerial view because those can kind of be indicators of where good photos can be taken. So just hop onto Google Maps, zoom out, zoom in a little bit, and maybe you'll find a banger location to take your next photo. Okay, super simple. The next tip is just turn around. And what I mean by turn around is that even recently I was on a shoot where I was taking a photo of like the obvious thing, let's say it's a mountain. And I was like, oh, photo, photo, photo. Okay, dope, those are not bad. And then I put my camera away and I walk away and I was like, oh, what's behind me is even more beautiful than what was in front of me. So sometimes the obvious shot is not the photo that you should be taking. Just turn around or at least just pay attention to your surroundings in general because you never know, but you could get a better shot than just what seems to be the obvious shot that everybody takes. So yeah, turn around and pay attention to your surroundings. Those are our pro landscape tips. Hopefully that will help you. Remember, this is just a beginner's guide. Obviously there's so much more that you can learn, but those are some tips from guys who do it every single day. So a big thank you to Jason and Gunnar for sharing those tips with us. Uh, if you wanna check out their work, I've linked their stuff below. Go follow them, they're amazing. Their photos are just like, ah, so good. I need, I wanna get as good as those guys. Also a big thank you to Inspired by Us and for inviting us out here for the last four days to learn about the history, check out amazing locations. As per usual, Iceland is like, my favorite place in the entire world to take photos. Like the last time I was here, I was here for five days and I took over like 10,000 photos and I posted about 20 to Instagram. And I have like a very high standard of what I post to Instagram and, and normally I only post like one or two photos from a trip and to get 20 from a trip like is just, 
that's that's the best. If you just want to go to a place where you want to get inspired just by the landscape at all surroundings, you got to check out Iceland. It's like number one on my list. Actually, Lizzie and I were talking about it earlier. Like we're 100% going to be coming back. I think probably at least once or twice a year. Like Gunnar's like, yeah, come back every six months. Anyways, guys, hope you learned a little something. If you did, please press like. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe. Would love for you to join along. And we'll catch you guys in the next videos. Peace out, everybody. From Iceland. <laughs> Thank you.